uh, there are a lot of neat things going on in developing countries. Uh, uh, one example that I think is uh, maybe my favorite is, is what's gone on in Bangladesh. Uh, it was just five years ago that two MIT uh, Bangladeshi brothers decided to provide uh, mobile money. And they decided to do that without being connected with the network. Uh, so it works through the mobile phone, very expensive mobile phone, uh, but it works across all the different operators there. Uh, of course, very few people in Bangladesh have a bank account, but uh, the vast majority do have phones. So they offered this service starting in 2011, uh, and now, uh, now they have over 13 million customers, and 22% of all the adults are connected up, and the adoption is on a, a very, very uh, fast curve. So this is the kind of wild adoption rate that we sometimes see uh, in the world of, of new technology. This one is, is every bit as fast as any that I've seen. So these people are getting financial services, transferring money, paying at shops, uh, new things, uh, applications showing up on, on top of that. Uh, so far it's at 10% of the GDP of Bangladesh, uh, about a billion dollars of business a month that's taking place there. So that's a very, uh, very exciting model uh, that, uh, you know, it's just one country where the regulations got going and critical mass was achieved. Now, the first application that these things generally bootstrap off of is uh, moving money, money transfer. And because the competitive services in these countries, the post office is often very expensive, very slow. Sometimes you have to uh, pay extra just to make sure you really do get your money out of that system. Uh, they can bootstrap as soon as they have cash in, cash out density high enough that people feel good, okay, I'll put my money in this thing and either I or the person who I digitally transfer it to, often uh, somebody in the urban area who earns money transferring it to somebody in the rural area, they'll be able to go and, and do that cash out uh, capability. But that's just the bootstrap. Uh, the, you know, the first generally three years, it's mostly used for money transfer. But then very quickly, the merchants realize that they could directly accept that digital payment and it would avoid a lot of complexity for them. And so slowly but surely, it becomes a, a digital uh, currency. Uh, one example of that is, is in the place you might least expect, which is Somaliland, uh, where the mobile operator there tells some has so much going on that people hardly cash out at all. Uh, on average, it's, it's once per month, and so there's actually more going on with the digital currency than there is with the paper currency. That's the one, although it's a small economy, uh, where that's uh, absolutely the furthest along. Most people know about Kenya. Uh, Kenya's built up over a number of years. Of course, the, the system's called M-Pesa, and that's now 31% of Kenya's uh, GDP. Uh, now there's value-added applications, including savings accounts, uh, short-term loans, uh, and the demand for those products is very strong, and we see them being adopted uh, to different uh, populations. And so things are happening. And in fact, as we get a few of these examples, the other countries are starting to say, okay, why don't they have uh, uh, this going on? Uh, uh, and they are looking at their regulations and saying, how can we enable this? I was just in India. Uh, they're moving to authorize what are called